I'm going to be reading from my new book, Clash and Levitation. The idea of fathers, I think, is a big part of what's in this book, or at least many of its poems. Um, about a year or two ago, I wrote a, a poem for my father-in-law, um, who just passed away this spring, and so I'd like to read it um, as sort of an elegy for him. Poor Cradle. Poor tangle cord we trailed behind us like an anguin ringlet lock from Rapunzel's mane that squished between the jam and door and slowly lost its curl. Poor receiver flecked with spit. We hugged with aching necks and whammed back down as if its angry plastic slam would snake its way back to our feckless loves and startle their faces into weeping. Poor tender buttons Lysawed once a year, tacky and half depressed from fingers scrapple grease. Poor box, maladroit and plain as a consignment gown bought for a blind girl's prom. How the shadow you left upon our wall lingered stark until the paintbrush licked your shape away. Poor pole beside our driveway, leaning century this December dawn, forever pocked with holes from our lineman's spikes on ancient bitter mornings shimmied up to wield his wrench against the wind and rang us from the lawn to say our home had service once again and if our children looked beyond the kitchenette they would see him hovered there freezing in the snow and waving back. One of the oldest poems in the book called Our Currency of Air in the lilting brook of Bangladeshi English that flows from Dr. Rajbani's lips between serious case and any questions, I believe again in a God who plagues with frogs and hail and kills a son to shatter Pharaoh's staff, a God who gives his word in mustard seeds, who builds his church on rock-dumb fishermen, who lets lions lap marrow from faithful bones, God of Charlemagne, my grandmother's God, whose answer to Hosanna is limbo, where infants float in goo for the sin of dying without a squeal. A limbo like this intensive care, a blip-blop arcade where James, an hour old, pants 93 times a minute, his monitor a wild topography of peaks and dips, like Coltrane solo in giant steps, every note wailing, angry penance across the tenor's reed for years, lost to tar-dark dope that bloomed brief sanctuary in his veins. Will my son live to feel the sharp pinch of vaccinations, or hear anything but this clinical space station beeping, I want to ask? Will his lungs drain to rise with mine as he snoozes on my chest? his matchstick fingers in the jungle of my beard, when our rocker's rails creak the downbeat to an August cricket serenade lit by the azure glow of a 3 a.m. nightlight. Pacing pine soul tiles, memory's film strip flickers my mentor, the great poet, childless and divorced, who scolded my younger self, sighing, oh, how your work will change once you see the world through a father's eyes as if he ever stood behind his bleeding wife's wheelchair, sweat greasing its orange rubber grips so he could spin them around the handle steel. Just because you know a thing is true doesn't mean you felt its hand wrap around your silver ring and squeeze. Reads the opening of a screed I scrawl across my mental stationery when Rajbani hums reaching for a pamphlet that explains, as a precaution only, intubation reduces serious risk of, oh doctor, if I could damn your flooding euphemisms with my fist, if I could strangle your scarf soft neck professor, your strained cliches about avoiding Laertes' rage, if only I could throttle every preemie in this wing to wring my son his currency of air. This is what I pray to no one when Rajbani dashes to Incubator 9, wishing shut a screen to shield himself from our stupid stares and start the pumping work only hands can do, caught as we are in a cruel red fermata where the flatline drones the only note it knows.